It's an honor. I mean, a real, real honor and a pleasure for me to be here with you this afternoon. First of all, I got a free meal out of the deal, and that's always good. The farmer and me, you know, the way, on the farm they say a weight on man's heart's through his stomach, and that's very, very true of me. So I do appreciate the dinner. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, myself, and uh, I love the topic that uh, was suggested that we talk on, just looking at how you be effective, look at, at things as far as policy is concerned, and, uh, and to utilize some of the experience that uh, I've had over my 24 years in, uh, in the Senate, where I think we have done some really, really incredibly good things. So uh, first of all, I am the only full-time farmer left in the legislature. My wife and I are very, very proud. We have three children. Two of them live on the farm with us. They've given us seven grandkids, so we have five of them that live on the farm with us, and the other two live right down the road. So we're very, very, very blessed. And when I close my argument, I'll talk to you about where I am right now since I'm not going to be returning in January, but I'll leave that to the end. But we live on the farm that I bought from uh, my, fam uh, my parents back in 1981. It's 274 acres, and I know it's 274 acres because we just sold the easement through the, uh, through the Rural Legacy Program and had to be surveyed. So there's another farm that's going to be preserved in perpetuity, and it's wonderful to know that you've got kids that love the farm and want to be there, and they're actively involved into it. You know, I come from a long line of farmers. Uh, we worked real, real hard. We were poor farmers. Uh, my, my parents had uh, 14 kids, actually had 15 kids. They lost their third child when she was three months old. So we grew up a family of 14, seven boys and seven girls. And if you look at the birth order, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, out of the 15 kids, I was number eight, right smack in the middle. Out of the seven boys, I'm number four, right smack in the middle. So my approach to issues that uh, come, have come before me, guess where I've been? I've been right in the middle. So. So, but it's uh, been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to serve. And, and this is a wonderful, wonderful occasion. And I'm so glad that uh, I call delegate Senator Eckert is here. Uh, she was one of the movers and shakers on the House that got this whole initiative started with the terrible, terrible situation with the Jackson family. And uh, that was very, very, very hard to witness. It was very, very painful to see what was happening, how far apart our agricultural community and our environmental community have become. But this sort of meeting today is sort of like, you know, the 911, you know, with the ground zero. Out of the ashes, the flag came up, and it's like a new beginning. And so it is a pleasure. And uh, I've had the fortune, not only in my capacity as a legislator, but also to serve on the Chesapeake Bay Commission. I chaired that, that commission for two years, where we have done some very, very wonderful work and every step of the way, every step of the way, we have been very, very sensitive of the agricultural community and ha how they fit in, how the farming community fits in with water quality. So, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I, I just give you a little way of background about myself in my career path from beginning to end. Uh, I started out actually um, volunteering on a political campaign and as a result of that, I was sentenced to the, to the Charles County Planning Commission, where I served for seven years. Uh, I got to be the chair of, uh, of the commission for four years. And uh, I didn't get reappointed because the county commissioners felt that uh, I was using the commission as a platform. At that time, Charles County was the fastest growing county, not only in the state of Maryland, but one of the fastest growing counties in the whole entire state. Schools were getting overcrowded. Roads were getting overcrowded. People were discontent. So I was pushing for how do you accommodate that growth to make sure that it pays some of its way. So I was one of the early advocates of an impact fee. And I was pushing it, but in a very gentlemanly, professional way. But they took that as that I was a political threat, so they didn't appoint me, reappoint me. So there were newspaper editorials and whatnot, all the good work that we were doing, and there was this groundswell. And uh, it was probably my first, but also my most memorable an important le uh, election for me, and I've gone through the 32 years being in office. It was my first election, but I ran with my dad, who was, it was his last election. And guess what? This year makes 32 years for me. My dad served for 32 years. So there's a spiritual connection there and things. So, so but he was well loved and well respected. He was a judge of the orphans court, and everybody loved him because I don't know if you know what the probate court does. It makes where there's those where people don't leave a will and the family's fighting over the estate. And you have to have somebody that 
knows it because there's a lot of trickery with a good lawyer, what happens there. But my dad had the reputation of somebody that knew how to cut the baby, how to make the Solomon's decision, and a real, real fair thing. So I inherited a lot of my skills from my dad. I left there, and I went, because I wasn't reappointed, I ran for, the county, for Charles County Commissioner, and I got elected. My dad and myself were the highest vote getters. We led the ticket in every district and every precinct in Charles County. So it was a great, great year for me. And when I went into the County Commissioner office, I was really rough around the edges. You know, I, I remember uh, uh, we had, uh, when the, we were dealing with physical crisis, when Governor Schaefer, Schaefer was in office, it seemed like every week we were getting another cut from the federal government. So we had the teachers union that uh, they had gotten this big salary increase uh, from the Charles County Board of Education. And in the meantime, the Charles County government was laying off employees. And so trying to work with them, trying to negotiate this thing, let's, let's lay this off until times get better. So a reporter asked me, and I said, you know, I care so much about the teachers. You know, my wife is an educator. I really and truly care for them. But, you know, if they're not careful, if they're going to insist on this pay raise, my fear is they may be perceived as pigs at the trough. And oh my God, what did I do? What did I say? So we had the budget hearing. And remember the Redskins with the little snouts? <laughs> All of the teachers came there, filled up the auditorium, but we were able to get it worked around. And then at that time, uh, with all the cuts, somebody asked me, a reporter asked me, says, well, what are you guys going to do with these cuts coming down all the time? And I said, well, you know, we're going to have a look to the federal government. It's the only cow that's given milk these days. So my cousin said, and the reporters took that up to him, my cousin said, Mac, Mac, you got to lay off the farm analogies and whatnot. So, <laughs> so I have improved myself professionally, believe me. But anyway, in that particular topic, and probably that time in, in, in the county commissioners was what really and truly became my training ground of how to be an effective person in Annapolis. We were dealing with this crisis, and anytime you have a budget crisis and watch it this next four years when we have to fund Kerwin, what happens when people know that they're getting cut, they protect their turf. Nobody wants to cut. Cut him, don't cut me. And it's a time when everybody ought to be coming together to share resources. But to get there becomes a very, very painful uh, uh, undertaking. As soon as I got elected, one of my wife's and my best friends was working on her doctorate in staff development. And we were three brand new county commissioners that came in. She says, can I use you as our case study? And I, was, I knew her and I knew her professionally and whatnot. So we agreed. So we went through this whole entire process of team building. And if you've ever been through a team building process, you do crazy things. It, onlookers, if they looked and said, what are those stupid fools doing? You, they blindfold you, you crawl under tables and whatnot, and who do you trust and whatnot? But it became a very, very way, good way for to develop three people that came together as a team. They came together as a team. And uh, to be a team, an effective team, and everybody says we've got a team, if you don't have the essential element of trust, you will never, ever, ever have a team. You have to give trust and you have to be trustworthy. If you can get that, you can become a very, very effective team. One of the tools that we use is the Myers-Briggs. Anybody know what the Myers-Briggs is? Ever done it? Any, any ENF peers in the room? <laughs> That's me, you know. I'm the extrovert and on the other end is your organizational skills. I have none, <laughs> and, and, and so I have no organizational skills, but many of you know Susan Lawrence, right? My legislative assistant, she's got the organizational skills, so we blend together very, very well to be a very, very effective team. But anyway, we had this fiscal crisis that came down, and this woman that was doing a staff, her, her, her doctor said to me, she says, you know, Mac, I went to a conference, and the Harvard negotiating team made a presentation. Now, all of you know, you know who the Harvard negotiation, the peace accord with Yasser Arafat at Camp David with Jimmy Carter. Harvard negotiating team, you've got to be crazy. We can't bring them down. So she said, let me check. So we start talking with them, and they agreed for $30,000. They would come down to Charles County, and we would identify 30 stakeholders, 30 community leaders, and they would give us four intensive days of training on negotiation skills and how to affect an effective, make an effective team. They came down. It, it was so good 
we started coordinating, to use an example, we have a nursing home had a, a van that we go pick their people up. We had Springdale was picking up people with disabilities. Just, but no coordination. They go all the way down to South County, pick up one person. So we brought together a coordinated effort. We did a lot of things like that, and as a result of that, we got nine National Association of County Awards for Outstanding Innovative Leadership. Just goes to show when you have a crisis, whatnot, if you can bring people together, it was so good that they wanted to institutionalize, so we set up a continuing, we called it VITAL, Visions and Teamwork and Leadership. Every year we would have a two-day retreat and we would identify one issue that was important to our county. And in order to get there, in order to get there, and this is the failure so many times in government, you have to have consistency and your word has got to mean something. We told, for instance, our Board of Education, we don't know how many more cuts are going to come down. What you have to do is tighten your belt, save where you can. And we promise you that at the end of the year, if you have cut major cuts and you're holding money, we're not going to penalize it for you. We're going to give you what you can and you can keep what you saved. And we did that through two budget cycles. You know what that means as far as credibility? And when you take a community of, of 30 people that are leaders and they're all in sync, it is incredible. It's an incredible. So that's the skills that I, I, I brought to Annapolis when I, when I came in. Uh, my first tour of duty was on the Budget and Taxation Committee, and uh, I had the opportunity after my third year to be asked to chair the, uh, uh, the uh, Capital Budget Subcommittee. And then uh, after that, in 2002, uh, we had a change, all four committee chairs, two retired, two lost election, and Senator Miller, President Miller, asked me to go over and chair the Finance Committee. And if you've all ever come before the Finance Committee, you know, you have all the jurisdiction of banking, all the insurance, all the health care, all the labor issues, all the transportations, all the economic development, and more. And uh, a subject matter that I knew nothing about. After all, I'm a farmer. I don't know anything about banking and health care and whatnot. So it was a real, real hard study to get used to. But, uh, and, uh, and the style that I used, the style that I used is, uh, and I love controversy. I love it when you have a situation where you have people that 